Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to our reading time. I have my friend Killy Willie James here with me. And um, today, in the second reading of The Little Red Hen, we're going to do comprehension strategies. And comprehension strategies are things that good readers do to better enjoy and better understand a story. So the ones that we will do today is, or are, making connections, summarizing, asking questions, and clarifying. Once again, these are comprehension strategies, uh, and these are things that good readers do to better enjoy and better understand a story. So the first one that I'll use before I even start to read is um, making connections. Making connections refers to uh, things that remind you of the story. For example, I have my cat here and he likes to sleep around all day. He really likes to be lazy. And uh, the story talks about one of the pets, one of the friends being lazy, one of the lazy friends being a cat. and. When I think of something that reminds me of the story, it helps me better understand and better enjoy the story. When I look at my cat and I see some of the pictures in the story, for example, this one, you see, it helps me to better enjoy the story. Okay, let's get started. James will probably walk, be prancing around, so don't mind if he does, okay? Here we go. The Little Red Hen. We'll skip through some parts not to make it so long. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll just uh, go to the parts of the story that I need. Okay, we'll go from the beginning for now. The Little Red Hen. Once upon a time, a cat and a dog and a mouse and a little red hen all lived together in a cozy little house. The cat liked to sleep all day on the soft couch. The dog liked to nap all day on the sunny back porch. And the mouse liked to snooze all day in the warm chair by the fireside. So the little red hen had to do all the housework. She cooked the meals and washed the clothes. I'm sorry, she cooked the meals and washed the dishes and made the beds. She swept the floor and washed the windows and mended the clothes. She raked the leaves and mowed the grass and hoed the garden. Okay, so this is a good point to stop to summarize. What have we learned about the story so far? We know that uh, some friends lived together in a cozy little house, a cat, a dog and a mouse, and a little red hen. And we also know that the little red hen does a lot of work while the other friends just like to sleep around and do nothing all day. So summarizing is a good strategy or a good skill to do so that you can better remember what's in the story. Because remember, there's no point in reading if you're not going to remember what it is that you're reading. So summarizing helps us do that. Okay, we will continue. One day when she was hoeing the garden, she found some grains of wheat. Who will plant this wheat? cried the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. I'd like to stop and clarify here for a second. Um, I, I'm going to reread about the part where uh, on page 17, she raked the leaves and mowed the grass and hoed the garden. If I'm a good reader and I don't know what a word means, I use the pictures to help me. This is called clarifying. She hoed the garden. So I see her there in, in her garden and she's got a garden tool. So she's using that garden tool to dig, uh, dig holes in her garden, no dirt. So as a good reader, I make the 
the connection that um, Ejo is a garden school. I realized that by using the pictures, by stopping, clarifying, and slowing down. Okay, we will continue. <clears throat> Let's see. One day when she was hoeing the garden, she found some grains of wheat. Who will plant this wheat? cried the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. I read that part already. Okay, so let's continue. Each morning, the little red hen watered the wheat and pulled the weeds. Soon, the wheat pushed through the ground and began to grow tall. When the wheat was ripe, the little red hen asked, Who will cut this wheat? Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. Now, the reason that I'm reading this differently is for the following, and this is called asking questions. Okay, if you look at the print, you see that when her friends respond, they, the author has written uh, not I with all capitals. So what is going on here? What is the author trying to convey? What is he trying to tell us? Boys and girls, if you know, tell your parents or your brothers or your siblings or your pets. If you don't know, this is the reason why. Okay, the author wrote those words in capital letters because he wants you to read those words aloud, out loud. He wants to emphasize that those friends really don't want to help. So let's read it together. I can't read it backwards, so I'll turn it over like this and we'll try to read together. Okay, here on this page right here. When the wheat was ripe, the little red hen asked, who will cut this wheat? together. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. Thank you. I hope you helped. Alrighty, let's continue on. Let's see, making sure that I've done asking questions, clarifying, making connections, and summarizing. I think that we've done all of them, but let's continue and do some more. I'm going to skip through. Let's see. Let me look at some notes over here. Okay. Here we go. I'm skipping forward a few pages. So let's start from here. Page 26. She gathered sticks and made a fire in the stove. Then she took milk and sugar and eggs and butter and mixed them in a big bowl with fine white flour. When the oven was hot, she poured the cake batter into a shining pan and put it in the oven. Soon the delicious smell filled the cozy, filled the cozy little house. The cat got off the soft couch and strolled into the kitchen. The dog got up from the sunny back porch and came into the kitchen. The mouse jumped down from his warm chair and scampered into the kitchen. Silly cat. Right now he's feeling active, huh? Okay, the little red hen was just taking a beautiful cake out of the oven. Who will eat this cake? Asked the little red hen. Okay, let's read that part together because it's all capitals once again. And that means that uh, the author wants you to read them aloud. So let's, uh, from here. Who will eat this cake? asked the little red hen. I will, cried the cat. I will, cried the dog. I will, cried the mouse. Okay, so this is another good uh, point to, to stop and summarize so that we can better enjoy the story. Because if, you, if we don't remember what we read about, boys and girls, we won't enjoy what we're reading. So... Um, three, uh, four characters, four friends live in this cozy little house. Cat, a mouse, a dog, a little red hen. The mouse, the dog, and the cat like to laze around, do nothing, sleep, nothing but sleep all day long. 
while the little red hen goes out to to take care of business. She's she's working hard. So um, <clears throat> she finds some some uh, grains of wheat. She plants them. She takes care of them. She waters them. Even though we skipped through, she I skip I skip I forgot how to say that word. Even though I skipped that part of the story for now, um, because it wasn't necessary. Okay, the point is that she tended the garden, she took care of it, she pulled the weeds, she put all the work in, and then she took the, uh, once the, the, the wheat was ready, she took it to the mill to be ground into flour, and, uh, and every time that she was going to do something, she asked her friends, who will help me? And the friends never wanted to help. So at the end of the story, the little red hen asked who will, uh, who wants to eat the cake with her. And obviously the friends want to eat, but since they didn't help her with any of the work, the little red hen doesn't let them eat. So that's a very, that's a very good lesson that the story tries to tell us here. Basically that if you, you know, if you don't work, you don't get to eat. So that's a powerful lesson. So boys and girls, these have been the comprehension strategies for today. i like you to um, think about a time when you tried very, very hard to learn something new or maybe build something. Um, was it hard to learn? Was it hard to learn a bike? Was it hard to learn uh, to ride a uh, skateboard? Or was it hard to do something new, uh, learn to play a new game? I want you to think about it and I want you to write in a journal. I hope that you've gotten a journal by now. Um, write about a time that you persevered. Uh, keep in mind the story that we read so that you can uh, better write. Don't worry about words that you don't know how to spell. Just remember the sounds that we use every day. The, the ones that we did at the first reading of this story uh, and the ones that we have been doing for since you guys have been in school. Uh, parents, and this, this note is for your parents, so uh, students, make sure that um, uh, talk to your parents, see if you guys can start a garden, if you guys can uh, cook together, if you guys can go out and learn something new. And remember, if you at first don't succeed, you keep trying. You keep trying until you persevere because this is what this, um, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about not, uh, not giving up so quickly on things when we, when we start to do something new. And also, we're also talking about um, working hard. You know, sometimes like the lesson, the moral of the story that we just read is that if, you know, if some people don't work, you know, or the moral is that if you don't work, you don't eat. This is a pretty strong message. So you can write about that as well if you like. But for now, I'd like you to write about a time when you persevere and um, tell me what it was. Maybe you can share it with me uh, when we go back to school. Alrighty. So thank you very much. This has been the second reading of the Little Red Hen, Hen in the theme of perseverance. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.